like diffusing a landmine. Oh my god! Holy crap! Oh my god! Oh my god! That is the biggest spider I've ever oh seen! Oh my god! god. No, man! For thousands of years, man lived wild, and our triumph over Mother Nature defined who we were. We were rugged, we were strong, and as we evolved, our ingenuity led to towering achievements. We secured our place at the top of the food chain, and now we have the waistline to prove it. I'm Creek Stewart. I'm a survivalist. I've mastered the skills of self-reliance, and for almost 20 years, I've taught them to people from all walks of life. But now, it's your turn for a midlife wake-up call. So get off the couch and into the woods. If you can survive a week with me, you can change your life. Survival is simple, just don't die. I'm here in the flatlands of Arizona's Sonoran Desert. It's over 100,000 square miles of terrain so brutal that it's been nicknamed the Devil's Highway by people who have tried to cross it. Some of my favorite books are old school military survival manuals. And it's the pages of this Army survival manual that's inspired the unique challenge I've set up for this week. This is a barren wasteland. Uh, it's like we landed on the surface of Mars. So I'm assuming when they drop to see her, those are for us. We got bags. I don't see Creek literally anywhere. Guess we got to pick a direction, fellas. I got a direction. <laughs> Creek, where are you? I want these guys to understand that this is a dangerous place. And it all starts with looking around and being aware of your surroundings. Their first challenge is to find me miles from their drop point. We're just gonna walk around and explore. Why am I following you? Oh my God, look at the spikes on that thing. Old Prickly Pete, that's your desert name. Peter is a news reporter from Paradise, Pennsylvania. After breaking up with his long-term girlfriend, Peter's idea of the perfect life all fell apart. I wound up living with my parents. I just needed some time to figure out what my new plan is in life. You excited? Uh, a little nervous. Jacob is an editor from Nashville, Tennessee. He's been suffering from anxiety and OCD his entire life. I came out here to kind of put myself to the test, get me out of my comfort zone, because I think that might be the ticket for me to overcome some of my issues. Just what is the difference between a, you and a bloody face is one of these things in your grill. Randy is a youth pastor from Circleville, Ohio. His family is the reason he's come to spend a week in the desert. I finally had a little boy, he's about to turn one, and I really just want to learn skills that I can show him so that even when I'm gone, I know he'll be able to take care of himself. I don't see any kind of creeks. Is it gonna pop out of that cactus like a stripper? What is that, smoke? Aha, we have signal, <laughs> jackpot. Hey, fellas. Oh, there hey. you go. <laughs> Thank God we're not alone. Welcome to the Sonoran Desert. Is that what this is called? I've spent my entire life studying survival skills. You know, while most kids were reading comic books, I was flipping through the pages of old military survival manuals that I dig out of my dad's sock drawer. And this week, we're going to be bringing the pages of some of my favorite military survival manuals to life. We're going to navigate and travel due east for a distance of 30 miles. 30 miles, that's a long distance, especially for three fat guys. If you make it, there's a buried supply cache filled with fresh drinking water and food. Each of you should have five items, a shovel, a survival knife, then you should have a metal canteen and a metal mug. Got it. There's a parachute, just like any down pilot would have. And we've got one five-gallon container of fresh drinking water for four of us for the entire week for our 30-mile stretch. My biggest fear this whole time is that we're not going to have enough water. Uh, there's no faucet sticking up out of a cactus. I really want to get moving before that sun gets so high, you know? OK. 30 miles in the Sonoran Desert isn't like 30 miles anywhere else. It's going to feel like about 200 miles to these guys. The entire week, we're going to be traveling due east. That peak kind of right there in the middle, right beyond that tree, that's about where the sun came up this morning. And so as long as we can see that peak, we're going to head in that direction.
How far are we going today, Creek? Well, we need to get at least five or six miles under our belt, I'm hoping. I'm getting tired. I can feel my muscles in my legs burning. And the whole time you're in this weird temperature zone that you're hot, but you're chilly when the breeze kicks up. It's exhausting. What's that over there? Looks like an old coffee can. Do you want to make some desert coffee for breakfast? Oh, please be, oh, no coffee. No coffee, but a really decent container. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, you know, you always find human trash. Today is a learning curve for all of us. We've got to gather materials, we've got to figure out how to rig this parachute up as a shelter, and we've got to get a fire going. See that big sideways stalk over there, that big pole looking thing? Yeah. yeah. That's agave, man. They call that the century plant. I'm thinking we use those to do some kind of parachute shelter. There's one skill that's listed in every single military survival manual I've ever read, and that's a parachute shelter. Why don't we each grab one or two of these and drag them to the middle of the meadow there where we'll make base camp. We gotta strip all these leaves off. So Randy, why did you come out here, man? Try to motivate myself to get back in shape. When I was 25, I said, I'm gonna go join the military like I always wanted to. And my grandpa was uh, Air Force EOD. So I told him one day, I said, Papa, I'm losing all this weight so I can join the military. And he said, go do it. Um, and then in uh, 2011, he died. Yeah. He was a big part of your life, huh? Huge. Yeah. Dad, I, wanted, I said I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> I'm loving that Randy is opening up so early this week because he's really here for the right reasons. Man, it's like full cloud cover now, isn't it? As we're setting up the paratipee, I have a sudden idea on how to use that coffee can to make fire, but it's sun dependent. Rather than keep on going with shelter, I'd rather switch gears and prepare that fire start just in case that sun pops out so that we're ready. I don't have to cuddle any closer to these two than I need to. Yeah. We're gonna use a couple items that I always have in my pack, but we've gotta modify this coffee container. Peter? I'm going to have you cut out the center of this lid. Arts and crafts, I can do that. Right. Jacob, kind of right in this area right here, just drill a small hole. OK. I want you to cut a square out of this. OK. Using a plastic coffee can in the middle of the desert is new to me. It's always been something to hold liquid or something to shoot for target practice. Uh, and here, he's talking about using it to start a fire. I'm going to stick this ink pen in this hole you made. Set this on top. Now we're going to seal it on with the lid. We should be able to make a parabolic mirror by sucking on this pin. I call this the fire pipe. This thing will focus the sun's rays and create an ember. I had no idea what was going on until it was actually constructed. I think it's pretty brilliant. Let's keep on moving with our shelter. There we go. There we go. That's looking kind of cool. Looks like I'm in a cocoon. Is this sweet looking? That's huge. So what are you guys thinking about we might not get fire if the sun doesn't come back out? What do you think about being a snuggle bunny with three big dudes? We might get sun, fellas. Let's get prepared. We're going to have one shot. Peter? Yep. We're going to have you do the sucking. OK. <laughs> you want to face this at a direct angle to the sun. All right, Randy, you're going to work with Peter. OK. I want you to hold your fingers over here a little bit. You'll kind of see where that sweet spot is. That's the inside of our agave stall. That's ultimately going to be your ember. Adjust your angle slightly. Just not enough sun right now. I never thought I'd be staying in the middle of the desert begging for sun. I don't see it moving like it was. You know, we just don't have it. Sometimes you roll the dice at Mother Nature and you just come up short. We didn't have an opportunity with the sun, and so consequently, we're going to be cold tonight. Well, fellas, it's no fire tonight. We got about maybe a half hour left of daylight, and then we got to hunker down. All right. 
I could use my ferro rod that I always have on me and start a fire in about five seconds. But there is no lesson when things come easy. I would trade gathering firewood all night if we're not having a fire. Without this heat, I'm really worried about the plummeting temperatures. It's getting really cold here. This sucks on a whole different level than the suck I have uh, faced before. I'm going to sleep in the middle tonight, so. <laughs> Can we make a creek sandwich tonight? <laughs> Survival sucks. Well, hopefully we'll be sucking on that fire pipe tomorrow. I've never slept outside, period. When I was in Boy Scouts, my dad was one of the den leaders, and his idea of primitive camping was sleeping in the back of an 87 Chevy. A fire would be nice about right now, don't you think? I want a fire tomorrow for sure, and I want food, and I would like a source of water. I would like a steak, and I would like a girlfriend, but neither of them are happening. <laughs> hey, Creek, there ain't nothing gonna eat me alive out here, is there? There's a lot of things that would love to eat you. Crap. Every single thing in this place is nocturnal, man. So how am I supposed to know the difference between Randy touching me and something eating me? Well, I'm not gonna touch you, so if you feel something, you're probably getting eaten alive. <laughs> You know, guys, there is one thing that will keep all the wild critters away at night. What's that? Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, children. It's day two in the flatlands of the Sonoran Desert. <sighs> that was a rough one. Indeed. It was cold last night. That might have been the worst sleep I've ever had. I, I can't go without fire again. I've never been so happy for the sun in the desert before. I couldn't sleep hardly at all. I don't know if I can make it another couple of nights. I want to go home. It was a long, miserable night last night, but everybody made it, nobody died, and they're stronger because of it. Let's make like horse crap and hit the trail, boys. Which way are we headed, fellas? That way, towards those mountains. Right toward the sun, man. Just when we think we see everything this desert has to throw at us, we walk headfirst into a huge mesquite thicket. You know, fellas, I'm a little concerned down in this thicket because we can't really see our landmark that well, and I don't want to get turned around in here. I'm going to teach these guys a navigation skill from the pages of almost every military survival manual, the shadow stick. You guys know that the sun moves from east to west, and when you stick something in the ground, it makes a shadow. Right. If we track this shadow, we can figure out the east-west line. We're going to put this rock right at the end of that shadow, and then we're going to wait about an hour or so, and we're going to make a mark at the end of the shadow again, and that's going to be the east-west line, the second mark being east. The ability to navigate in a survival scenario is critical. Just being able to walk in a straight line can save your life. So there's our first rock. All right, there's our second. So as the sun passes, it moves the shadow from west to east. So this is going to be our east-west line right here. So in general, we need to be headed in that direction right there. It's no joke out here, boys. Carrying this junk miles to the desert and the sun and the heat is starting to get to me. That sucks. Guys, I got to stop for a second. I got a thorn in my ankle. Everything that you walk through is thorny and spiky and sharp. How in the world did you get a thorn way down in there, man? Probably from last night. Yeah, thorns in places we don't want to talk about. I'd trade anything for sand in my crack right now. I mean, there's sand out here, too. If <laughs> I tell you what, guys, I'm actually worried about this sun, too, man. I say as soon as we get through this mesquite thicket, we find a clearing and start thinking about fire, because I do not want to go another night without fire. There's one thing I know about the sun. You use it when you've got it, because you don't have a guarantee to have it for very long. Let's say we take advantage of this spot right here. OK. My shoulder's killing me. The sun is out. This is our one opportunity. All right, Peter, you're up, man. If we don't get an ember, it's our fault. Guys, I literally think we got 15 minutes. I can feel the heat from it. I can't even describe how frustrating it is. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. For me, who's a control freak to begin with, try to keep it real steady. Randy, you're gonna have to play with it. This literally drives me insane. Back it up and move it forward a little bit and find that we don't have it. We're getting cloud cover. 
I can definitely tell Creek is frustrated. Mama birds gotta let the babies fly. Back it up into that focal point. Oh, stay still too peak. far. The whole time I'm sitting there and I'm sucking on this thing, I'm thinking, I don't know what it is. Maybe Randy's just not doing it right. Maybe I should just put on a pair of corduroys and the friction between my thighs could get a fire started. There are so many things that are going wrong in this process. We've got multiple guys holding multiple pieces. This fire start may not work. Give him a break, because he's just doing this. You know, many hands make light work, but sometimes too many hands can really get annoying. Well, you look crazy, dude. You're, like, freaking me out right now. You really focused. This is definitely one of the first times that I've been able to focus on something, you know, other than food. OK, hold it right there. Do not change a single thing that you guys are doing. Holy cow, it actually worked. We got this thing. I don't want to drop it. Oh, my gosh. Stay steady. Protect it. All right, we're going to grow it. Pull that ember off right into that pocket. OK, Randy, blow into there. Nice and gentle. I'm not going to lie, Randy. You look like a total badass <laughs> oh right now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Getting this fire start is like second only to like marry my wife and having my, my baby boy be born. Ah! Man. <laughs> I felt like for the first time since I've been here that I'm pulling my weight and I'm contributing. It did a lot to relieve anxiety. Yes! Uh, let's wrestle a mountain lion with our bare hands. I'm ready. <laughs> It's a huge relief to have our fire going. So the rest of the day is pretty simple. We're gonna set up our shelter, gather firewood, and hunker down for another freezing night. It's day three in the flatlands of the Sonoran Desert, the hottest desert in North America. We're about a third of the way on our 30-mile hike to a buried supply cache of food and water. And I'm just thankful for cloud cover today. Fellas, I know you don't want to hear it, but we really need to hike today because I want to stop down early so that we can start thinking about food. I like that idea. This we'll boy's try. belly was rumbling all night. I'm starting to get really, really hungry at this point. Who in the world tied this at the top? It might have been overkill. You hog tied this thing, man. Don't say hog tied right now, man. I haven't had bacon in like four days. What kind of things are out here to eat anyway? The only thing I've seen this entire trip is bugs. I saw ants, I've seen spiders. Yeah, I'm not going to roll with those spiders too well, bro. Dude, you know you're just sleeping on all kinds of little spider man, holes, man. Man, why'd you have to tell me that? I had my wife kill the spiders oh, at home. Man. Are you serious? <laughs> I'll kill them for you. Oh, my gosh, dude. Well, welcome to the land of millions of spiders. Because of the clouds today, we can't depend on the fire pipe later on to make fire. So we're going to carry fire in a pithy agave stalk. We're going to put a coal from our fire into the stalk and walk across the desert with it. Ideally, this just starts to burn down through the inner pith of this thing, you know? I would say when we get to a down round in here, we start looking for a base camp. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If we don't keep this ember alive, we have to repeat this tough process with the parabolic mirror all over again. Man, I feel like the fattest guy ever to carry the Olympic torch. Dude, you got to get back. I'm just inhaling all of that smoke. <laughs> Follow me, guys. <laughs> I'm walking along, and every time I'm blowing into this thing, it's just blowing heat and ash up into my face. That's serious, man. I look back, and Randy's got ash all over his face. He's looking like something out of a, like, Blackbeard novel. This hike seems like it's turning into the Creek Stewart death march. Hey, Creek. Yo. I found my mule deer. Yee! -yee! Oh, dude, seriously. Creek has mentioned that this area is native to these things called mule deer. You want to taste? It looks like there's still some meat on it. Dude, did you just lick that skull? Yeah. That was so nasty. Oh, you don't know what you're missing, bro. This is going to be our pet, our mascot. Jacob, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Jacob really opened up on our hike today about things that he just deals with inside his own head. The piece of kind of unplugging from everything has really just kind of, um, I don't know, sparked a, 
a new life inside of me. It's, it's really uh, something I didn't quite expect. Growing up, I just, you know, when I got anxious, I ate. And then after I ate, it would make me more anxious because I knew I shouldn't have done it because it's only taking me further away from the person I want to be. That's why I'm here, because food isn't the answer, you know. I got married three months ago. You know, my wife deserves yeah. the best version of myself, and I deserve the best version of myself. Survival is 90% mental, and this week is going to prove to Jacob how mentally strong he is. We're hiking fast today for two reasons. We've got a supply cache to get to, and we're carrying fire. I say we call it quits, man, and hunker down in this valley. I'm going to let you guys take point on fire. All right, let's dig it out, boys, because this thing's about to become extinct. I want to know that these guys can get fire and set up this shelter without me. You never know when I might not be here. There we go. All right, all right, all right. Take it easy. Grab some of them sticks. There it's going. Keep going, brother. Oh, man. oh I'm seeing flames. Keep going, keep going. There it is. Flip it over. How you doing, Jacob? I'm good, man. Uh, a little teary-eyed from the smoke there. <laughs> Don't lie, that's not from the smoke. You're just an emotional being. You're one with nature right now. We're now in the middle of the Sonoran Desert, 12 miles away from our buried supply cache, and the guys just started fire all by themselves. All right, guys, let's bust out this shelter. How sweet is that thing, dude? <laughs> that looks awesome. The agave americana, AKA the century plant, is one of the most useful survival plants in the Sonoran Desert. You'll notice how the leaves are really fibrous, almost looks like thread. And the tip of the leaf is really hard and pointed, almost like a needle. When you process all the chaff away from those fibers, you end up with agave needle and thread. You never know when you might need to make an unexpected gear repair. In this case, I'm gonna sew up a tear in our parachute shelter canopy. In survival situations, you always use the resources that you find along the way. Although I haven't seen any animals in this desert, I have seen a lot of insects. Every survival manual I've ever read has got a chapter or at least a paragraph about insects. Okay. And sometimes with trapping and survival, you have to go after what you're seeing. I've got an idea on how to make a series of insect pitfalls using our canteens here. There's always a paragraph or two in every survival manual about eating insects, but it's the one thing that most people don't go for. They're fat rich, they're protein rich, they're calorie rich, they're just tiny. They love cover. So if we make a trap that they can fall into while seeking cover, we might be able to bag some insects overnight, you know? Insects are gross to a whole nother level. This is so far out of my comfort zone. We're gonna bury our canteen so that it's flush with the ground, and then we're going to set up some cover for an insect. You guys find some other kind of insect-rich areas, set some pitfalls, and then we'll meet back at camp. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. This is like playing the worst sandbox ever. I think my brother dared me to eat a wild strawberry as a child, and that's as pretty uh, close to nature as I've gotten. All right. Now that we've got our bug trap set, it's a good opportunity to take advantage of eating the one wild edible I know of that we've been passing all week long. You know those flat padded cacti? Yeah. 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 It's a prickly pear cactus. They're edible. I say we go gather some of those up. All right. They've been hitting us the entire time we've been walking through this thing. I'm pretty sure I could have pulled one out of my pants last night if he had asked me to. That looks like a good one right there. That looks like a good one right here. Oh, there's one in my leg. Got all the stupid hairs already in my hand. Let's go drop these on the fire and roast these needles off. How long does it take? My stomach's been growling at this point for two days, and um, I'm ready to eat. 
It still looks like it's going to taste like death going down my throat. As long as those little hairs are gone, that's all that matters. At this point, I'm kind of hoping for bugs tomorrow. I don't know where your head's at, Especially man, but I'd rather do this than bugs. <laughs> We're going to add water to it and boil it. Prickly pear cactus have been a staple in Mexican and Central American diets for thousands of years. It's got a great flavor. Yeah? Funkadelic texture, though, man. It was like a loogie, dude. <laughs> Ugh, that's disgusting. Like a green bean flavored loogie. How is it? It's not bad, boy. It's not bad, right? Just down the whole thing? Absolutely. Very slimy. I don't care what the taste is. I don't care what the consistency is right now. Just get something in my stomach. Get it, boss. Get it. It tastes like a cucumber that has been left outside in the yard um, to rot. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> That's gross. We're going to be lazy for the rest of the night. We're going to soak up what little calories these prickly pears offer and hope for big, fat, juicy bugs in the morning. It's day four in the Sonoran Desert. The weather is all over the place and totally unpredictable. One minute, it's hot sun, then it's cloudy, then it's hot again. It is almost impossible to plan for what this desert throws at us. Guys, it's raining, man. It's gonna start raining. We should probably try to gather some of this up. The silver lining on this rain is that it's 100% drinkable. Our five gallon bucket of drinking water is just about gone. So we're gonna use our parachute canopy to funnel rainwater right inside. If we do tie up these two ends and just set a rock down here, we'll at least get a big puddle and then we can poke a hole with the jug under it later. We're basically just going to create some kind of a drip system. This is clutch, man, having this parachute. I mean, that's about as good as we can do. Hey, Creek. Yeah. It's actually working, buddy. Are you serious? Is, yeah. it, is it dripping? It's dripping right into it. Are you serious? It's, That's awesome, yeah. man. The excitement in that moment is just unreal. I mean, it's just this huge Dude. sense of, like, we did this. While we're waiting for this, why don't we think about checking those bug traps? Fresh water. Dude, if we can get food, food and water in one day, <laughs> we're set. Fingers crossed, man. To be honest, I'm really skeptical that we'll find anything. Just setting a canteen in the ground doesn't seem like a good way to get any kind of real food. Moment of truth, sucker. Open it up. At this point, anything's going to be better than prickly pear. Oh, my gosh. What? Oh. What is it? We got some kind of... It's in there crawling, it's... dude. Oh. <laughs> That's... Oh my... I've eaten centipede before, but this one is like a centipede on steroids. And I can tell by the look in these guys' eyes that they are definitely a little freaked out. You ever trapped anything before? No. Congratulations, man. Huge score. Yeah, I'm trying to feel that sense of accomplishment, but... Uh... <laughs> Who's next, man? Rick the Pete. Get the way. It's right over here. Like diffusing a landmine. Oh my god! Holy crap! Oh my god, oh my god! That is the biggest spider I've ever oh seen! My oh my god. god! No, man! What is that, a tarantula? That's I think it's a tarantula, man. That thing is awesome looking. I've never seen a tarantula outside of a glass cage. I am definitely freaking out. That thing's gonna jump up and shank you. We're gonna cook these bugs the only way I know how. Stick a stick in them and roast them over the fire. He's coming out. He's coming out. There he is. There he is. Him. Okay. Stick okay. him. I'd be lying if I didn't say I was a little nervous about a poisonous spider that I'm trying to shake out of a canteen. <sighs> oh, he's got. Oh, he's, he's, he's looking right gosh. at Jacob, dude. He's looking right at Jacob. Stop creeping, man. If you could have been living inside of my head at that moment, it would have just been like screaming. <sighs> We're definitely gonna err on the side of well done with this yeah. guy. Yeah. Centipede time. Oh, there he goes. Uh, Dang, that thing dude. is fast. Cut it quick. I don't know what part of this thing is edible or anything. Head off. Got the head off first. Yeah, I'm working my way up. All right, there's the head. It is like a marshmallow, man. <sighs> that is nuts. Let's get these bugs on the Barbie, man. Oh, dude, his legs are still moving. Let's see what that tastes like. Bottoms up. Don't think about it too much, man. It starts off with a nice char, but it's got this, like, horrible, putrid, gamey aftertaste. Oh, no, dude. Enjoy, buddy. Got this. 
Thank you, Lord. I can hear it crunch. Oh, that ain't that bad, man. It's really not bad. To each his own, man. The centipede was really crunchy. Kind of tastes like a crisp, burnt piece of meat. There is nothing about this tarantula in any stage of the preparation and cooking process that makes it look like food. I'll be the first to try a tarantula leg. Whew, that stinks. I can immediately tell from Creek's reaction that it doesn't taste that good. I know there's sustenance in there. You know, the flavor really sucks, but I really feel like there was actually something in it. Come on, Prickly Pete. Down the hatch, buddy. There's not a whole lot of meat inside, so it's mostly just exoskeleton, I guess, I'm eating. Look at you, man. Here's the guy that's scared Huge of spiders. Fear of spiders. Tearing off it. a big leg. I'm taking a big bite out of it, dude. I know, man. I can't Seriously. think of a better way to just, like, face your fear than to eat it. Jacob has arachnophobia. If he can push through this, he can push through anything when he gets back home. All right. Swallow that fear, man. That's better than the centipede. Dude, man, good job, man. Seriously. Oh, there we go. Hopefully, these guys have been paying attention this week because tomorrow, I'm about ready to throw them a curveball. It's day five. Surprise, surprise. I hope these guys find my note because I am not going to be there when they wake up. Up. The sun's up. That's what's up. Hey, man, where's Creek? He might be over using the bathroom. Oh, hold on. What? Check this out. It's on the back of the manual. Guys, you're on your own. Remember what you've learned. Travel east. See you at the objective. Creek. Crap. Oh, man. Creek has gone AWOL. He's left us high and dry. We have to fend for ourselves now. I hope these guys have been paying attention all week long because they have to hike all day today before they set up camp. I'm about halfway, man. Top me off. I hope they're rationing their water because it is going to be a hot one today. These guys have to remember how to carry fire because that's the only guaranteed fire that they have in this desert. The agave stock will hold an ember for a long time, but they sure have to keep an eye on it because it's definitely not foolproof. You would think that the desert would just be flat. All these little hills suck. Not only that, but it's just like a minefield. Oh, they're everywhere. Oh, that one went right into my leg. Before this whole experience, I had never been on a plane before. I had never even been further west than Pittsburgh. This is really gonna shake things up in my life. Hopefully this will give me that chance that I need to move forward. I'm definitely feeling the weight. Now we have one less person, and that's just more for us all to carry. Hold up, guys. You all right, man? It's hard to hike in this desert, even if you're in great shape. So I really hope these guys pace themselves today, because the last thing we need is somebody having a heat stroke. You need help? I'm good. I just missed a step. There's no mercy out here in the desert, so you just have to get up and move on. You can't stay down. If you stay down, you die. Well, he's been nursing this thing, but it's about to go. I'm really having trouble keeping the ember going today. We're just going to have to find a spot soon uh, to make base camp. Almost went out on me like four times walking over here. There you go. Wrap it up and blow on it, dude. Hey, as soon as that gets into flame, man, we need some firewood. There you go. Come on, baby. those sticks to catch. I can't believe that our fire just went out. <laughs> we all just panic, and I think that's our first mistake. Randy, talk to me, man. What's going on with the fire? I can't talk. Hold on. Try and get another ember going. 
we're not really communicating well. And for the first time this week, I don't feel like we are a team. We're smothering it. Grab all that out and start from scratch. We need to focus, slow down, be patient, and work as a team. Otherwise, we're sleeping in the cold again tonight. We got one last chance. I've got a couple small embers. We put too much heavy stuff on it last time, so we right. need to get lighter stuff. All right, go get a bunch of ones and get ready. Creek told us that the most precious thing out here is fire. Let's get this thing right. Just talk to us, man. Just keep them coming. We're doing good so far. Just don't be out too long. Ah, it's absolutely nuts right now. Hopefully, we can get this thing to stay and actually burst into flame. Let's keep feeding it. Whoa. Oh, we're cooking, boys. We got it, baby. Excellent, right. man. Not sleeping cold tonight. Now we have fire. Uh, it's a great time. I'm so happy that it worked out. I was really concerned there. We've worked so well together as a team that nobody's really kind of set themselves apart as the group leader. I mean, that was Creek. And without that voice of direction, I think that we were all just kind of, uh, I felt like an idiot there for a minute. I think we all did, man. How's that? Yeah. I'm surprised that I've only pooped two times out here. I'm usually a once a day kind of guy. Oh, dude. I don't know about you, fellas. I'm exhausted, my legs are exhausted, I'm sick of walking. Yeah, man. I feel like we've walked like 100 miles. I feel like that's all we've done is just move, move, move. I'm ready for a little siesta. A, yeah. It sounds good to me. I honestly feel really, you know, peaceful tonight. I just want my wife to know that uh, I love her more than life itself, and um, she's gonna see a changed man when I walk back through that door. Starting out, I thought she was better than me, and you know, when we would walk together down the street, people would think, you know, like, why is she with him? But I, I don't think that anymore. I'm just excited to see what I'm gonna look like on the other side of this thing, because now I know that I can accomplish anything. Just took 27 years to figure it out. This has been an incredible week. I got through something I never thought I'd be able to do in my entire life. And as much as it hurt, it's a pain that's made me grow. Sometimes you need to go halfway across the continent before you can find yourself again. I'm really happy right now. I'm really happy. I'm very grateful to be out here. I'm very grateful for these these guys, but I'm ready to go home. I just want to go squeeze my little boy right now. <laughs> I've never been away from him this long. It's the final day of our 30-mile hike through the Sonoran Desert. I'm waiting for the guys to come in on their last leg so that we can dig up the supply cache of food and water and get the heck out of here. I'm ready to go. Yeah, you guys smell horrible. Well, thanks, man. Love you, too. <laughs> we reek. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Six days in the desert. It takes a toll on a guy's body. We really need some water because we are bone dry. Each of us, I think, has a little bit in our canteens. I mean, I say we kind of head out this way and up the hill, straight towards that sun. Oh, good morning, sunshine. Ow. Uh, we got to be getting close. I hope so. I see the mountain peak. Nice. I'm at the supply cache, and I finally see the guys working their way through the desert. I see Creek. Oh, yeah. Yee -yee. Hey, I can smell you. They look like a ragged, haggard group of guys, but they sure are a sight for sore eyes. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you were a mirage, you beautiful blonde desert angel. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, good to see you guys. This gentleman. <laughs> is your supply cache right here. Oh. I know how much they're going to appreciate this supply cache of food and water. Dig it up, man. You guys earned it. 
Raiders of the Lost Ark stuff here. Oh, I hit something. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Here it is, boys. Inside the buried cache are military meals ready to eat. It's like a buffet. And several bottles of fresh drinking water. No parachute-flavored oh. water this morning. No joke, right? Oh, dry fruit. Beef patty grilled. Cheddar cheese crackers. Is it wrong that I'm going to start with the cookies? <laughs> Heck no, man. People have described MREs in a lot of different ways, but to me, this is the best food I've ever had in my life. You know, as a survival guy, I oftentimes think about what if things just all go to heck, and I find myself wandering across a barren landscape kind of looking for resources. There's no other guys I'd like to have with me in a scenario like that than you three guys. <laughs> and that's the honest-to-goodness truth. You know, Peter, for a guy that's never been west of Pennsylvania, you came out here and showed the Sonoran Desert who's boss, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you were clutch in that fire start. It was an honor to spend a week in the woods with you, man. I really, and with really you. enjoyed it. One of the biggest things that's really hit home to me is how big this world actually is. And I know for sure I've got to get out of Lancaster County. I've got to get out of my rut. And I've got to see the world a little bit more because it has a lot to offer. Randy, you carried our fire all day long. Even though that ash was sprinkling all over your face, you know, you just didn't stop. There are a lot of people that have discounted me in so many ways throughout my life, but if any of them wants to look at this and uh, try and discount what I did here, I welcome them to go out into the desert with no food and very little water and hike 30 miles in five days. And then there's Jacob. There's something symbolic about you eating that tarantula that kind of encompasses your whole week, about you overcoming mental obstacles and hurdles. Fear is very natural and so is anxiety. It's a great survival skill until it starts to control you. And this week, you controlled your anxiety and you conquered your fears. There's one more thing in the bottom of that pit. I'm gonna give you the same exact survival knife rig that I use myself. And I think I speak for these other two guys when I say that you are definitely sufficient. That is a thing of beauty, gentlemen. Oh my gosh. This is not a knife, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of who I am. I am the razor sharp edge that cuts through everything that holds me back. I didn't do it on my own, you know? I know that, we all know that. You guys are some important people in my life now, and I won't forget that. Yeah. All right, guys, let's hit the road and get back to civilization. Back at home, people rarely get pushed to extremes, but here in the desert, everything is extreme. And it's awesome to see that it's brought the absolute best out of these guys. I got serious cotton mouth right now.